There is an old dark joke, which goes something like this. My great uncle Angus fell into a vat of whisky and drowned at the distillery. Two of his workmates tried to rescue him, but he tenaciously fought them off. The truth is that anywhere large volumes of liquid are present, the risk of drowning exists, and breweries and distilleries are no exception. Although it is not always drowning, but the temperature of the liquid which is fatal. One of the worst examples occurred in Itkani, Romania, when a boiler at a distillery exploded in 1895. Twenty men who worked on the floor above were thrown down into the boiling spirit below. Twelve died instantly and the others were severely injured. In London in 1815 a massive vat full of beer lost its structural integrity and collapsed, flooding the nearby area with the frothy fluid when one of a number of hoops holding it failed. The vat was 22 feet high, held together by 22 metal hoops, seven of which weighed nearly a tonne each. It contained 3,555 barrels of strong beer when it gave way, and the beer flooded out into the nearby crowded tenement buildings near St Giles Circus, the name of the intersection of Oxford Street and Charing Cross Road. The force of the rushing beer was enough to wreck shops and collapse buildings. Eight people were drowned in the chaos, but more deaths occurred in the aftermath. Twelve people were suffocated in the rush when a crowd piled in on their hands and knees to take advantage of the free beer flowing around. Not all deaths are noticed so quickly. In Sydney, just after New Year's on the 3rd of January 1894, the body of a brass finisher named James Taylor was discovered in a water tank at Cornwell's Brewery. When recovered, the body appeared to have been there five to six days. How he came to be in there was not disclosed. On the 31st of July 1897, a 68-year-old night watchman at the Castle Main Brewery in Melbourne named Joseph Hartley was last seen alive at 3am by workmates. Hartley, who was married, had worked at the brewery for 13 years. When it was noticed he was missing at 4.15am, a search was instigated, which resulted in the missing man being found in 10 feet of beer in a tank. At the inquest it was ruled an accident, but other than speculating he had some sort of dizziness or other health issue, and fell in while leaning over checking the tank, how he came to fall in was a mystery. For a man who died in such a manner, he was ironically described as sober and trustworthy. The beer was drained away, resulting in a loss of £140. An apprentice named James Kirby, aged 26, at James Bogues and Sons Esk Brewery in Tasmania, had been on the job for about six months, on the 9th of August 1900. He was regarded as a steady fellow, and was speaking with the brewer only minutes before his accident, when he seemed in normal health. Kirby was assigned to watch a 9 foot 6 inch deep vat containing 1500 gallons of wort, the liquor after it leaves the malt and before the hops are added. One of his duties was to monitor the temperature at which it entered the vat. The proper way to do this was to kneel and hold a rail that went around the top of the vat. Kirby instead had been seen leaning over the rail to lower the thermometer in and being cautioned not to do so. Nobody witnessed the accident but it is presumed that is what he did, leaning over too far and falling into the boiling liquid. His watch stopped at 9.37am, the time he died. The brewer passed by soon after but didn't think Kirby's absence remarkable. However at 10 he noticed Kirby was not at his post again and checked. Kirby's hat was floating on top of the liquid. Immediately Mr Bogue was notified and the fires raked out and the vat drained. At the bottom was the body of Kirby and the thermometer. It was determined he had died of shock caused by scalding. He had literally boiled to death. Like Kirby, George Castle, the 38-year-old head cellarman at Williams Walkerville Brewery in Adelaide, was considered to be a reliable and steady man. On the 20th of January 1903, he went to test a vat of stout which was fermenting on the second floor of the brewery for temperature and specific gravity but failed to return. The assistant cellarman, James Swanson, had the vat dragged and the body of Castle rose to the surface. It was conjectured that he had been overcome by carbonic acid fumes, causing him to fall in and drown. Swanson reported that Castle had been feeling bilious all day, which may have played a part in his accident. 
the vat and its contents were to be destroyed. Castle left a widow and five children. At a brewery in London's East End in October 1907, a 41-year-old employee named James Canham was noticed missing. His job was keeping down the froth on a vat of fermenting stout. The froth was pushed aside and his body found floating in the beer, apparently having fallen from a ladder. Oddly enough, although he had been employed in a brewery and drowned in beer, Mr. Canham was a teetotaler. Gilbert Hocking was a 44-year-old working at Milne and Company's distillery in Southwark, Adelaide. On the 13th of July 1944, he was seen emptying a vat of spirits into a six-foot-deep fermenting pit using a hose. Half an hour later at 2.30am, when he failed to answer a call to join his workmates for a cup of tea, they found him floating face down in four foot of spirits. It was thought he had slipped in, and although he managed to stand up, the fumes overcame him, and he collapsed and drowned. His rescuers lowered a ladder in, but were forced back by the fumes three times before a rope could be placed around his body to haul him out. Not all drownings are accidents. In the east end of London, a carpenter and former army sergeant, Arthur Tillett, aged 34, who had been gassed in the First World War, ended his life by drowning himself in 9,000 gallons of returned sour beer being used to manufacture vinegar. In Dunedin, New Zealand, on January the 25th, 1932, a farmer named John Clement Edmonds, who had suffered from severe depression, wrote a note reading, You'll find me a number three vessel. Cheerio to all. They did, and his death was recorded as a suicide. Why he chose a brewery was unstated. The Port Piri recorder reported that a German brewer, distraught over the economic downturn of the Great Depression, committed suicide in August 1932. When his sales dropped a hundred gallons in a month, he wrote in chalk on the outside of the vat that he could not survive the disgrace of his decreased sales, and that his ghost would haunt the local beer house at night. Then he leapt into the boiling liquid.